My name is Mark Taylor and I'm a life coach with the Anti-Recidivism Coalition. Over 56,000 Californians and over 200 of our incarcerated community members have lost their lives to COVID-19. Now, even though I spent 21 and a half years in prison, I was not locked up during a global pandemic. I cannot imagine how difficult that must be. Now, I lost my mother while I was incarcerated and I lost my father after I was released and honestly speaking, it was a lot more difficult dealing with the death of my mother because I was incarcerated at the time. Now, I know a lot of you have lost loved ones over the course of the past year. We at the Anti-Recidivism Coalition want you to know that you are not forgotten. We are out here advocating for you every single day. And we want to encourage you to do everything in your power to stay both physically and mentally healthy. Psychologically, I stayed focused on the fact that I wanted to get out of prison. That was my goal. And I did not want to die in prison. It was something that I had made a point to prior to the pandemic. And if no other reason, the pandemic made it more important, more of an emergency. So uh, I, I was keeping my focus on preparing for the board, preparing myself for that Inter, that internal awareness, that insight, just to make sure that I was on top of those things that I needed to work on and to be on top of myself. Physically, which was, I think, even bigger key, is I stayed on a routine exercise. I wanted to keep my core, so I did a lot of uh, planks. and I really wanted to be physically in shape for when I got out into society and I knew healthcare was a big issue. I wanted to be healthy and not having any ongoing medical issues like they were talking about with the pandemic, this pre-existing conditions. I had checkup after checkup and I was clear and, and I wanted to remain that way. Um, I prayed. I prayed and I stayed in my word. It was very, very, very hard when I was incarcerated because it seemed like when the pandemic hit, um, all the biggest movements were taking place in my life at that time. Um, as far as court, um, they stopped visiting. They stopped day room hours. They we were on lockdown all day, it seemed like, in a room with eight other women, six. Um, so for me, what I did was I just, I stayed in my word. I worked out in my room. I tried to remain as positive as I could. Um, I kept hope alive, knowing that this too shall pass and that it would one day go back to somewhat of a normal. Um, but when I was incarcerated during the pandemic, it was very, very, very hard. Very hard. When the pandemic first hit, like, they weren't so hard on us about, like, wearing masks. And, like, once March came around, um, everybody started having masks. Um, you couldn't, you couldn't be in the day room without your mask. Um, and then, like, uh, everything just started hitting me, like, once I would get on the phone and I'd talk to, like, a family member or a friend. And they would tell me either like my own friends or friends of their friends passed away. And like, there's not much I can do besides give my deepest condolence because I'm incarcerated and like I put myself in that position, but also I'm in there working on myself to better myself and um, kind of give others motivation. Like um, this isn't where we want to be. One, uh, I haven't seen or experienced the change that everyone else sees due to the pandemic. Um, technology has been a huge obstacle, hurdle, and challenge for me to get accustomed to and adjusted to. Um, I was inside and prior to my incarceration a more sociable 
person interacted face to face. Um, phone calls were important to me where I could hear the voice where things now are all digital and texting and you don't get that same interaction, but it's still important and I'm learning to develop that type of skill that's more inclined with today. Um, I think being in prison and not having that internet access uh, stents you in that in that frame and it stunned me a great deal. So I'm I'm slowly gathering my computer knowledge and awareness, but it was a challenge at first, yes. It was nothing that I thought it was gonna be. Um, having to already transition from being incarcerated for 14 years and then coming out to this world, um, it was a lot harder because I wasn't able and I'm still not able to do a lot of the things that I wanted to do. Um, everywhere, everyone's wearing masks. It's, you know, there's no indoor dining. You can't even go to a restaurant and eat. So it's kind of like, it takes me back to being incarcerated because, you know, there you're not able to, you know, go out to the day room when you want to. You can't go to the yard and program when you want to. And it's just the same out here. You know, it's, everything is limited. Everything is limited. And, um, it's, like I said, it was hard enough transitioning out to the world. So trying to get used to that pandemic, it just, it still feels like um, to some degree you're kind of still incarcerated because you're not able to do everything. Yeah, I'm free physically, you know, I'm free mentally, but um, you're still not able to enjoy, you know, life and do the things that you want to do because there's so many restrictions on everything, just like on the inside. Overall, it's been good. Just like, you know, I'm not used to um, having a social distance. Like the other day I was uh, at the, the bank and I was behind somebody and they turned around and looked at me like, are you all right? And I, I was just like, well, I took a step back. Like, well, my bad. <laughs> but like, um, I, I, I've been having like a great um, reintegration back into society and everything. Um, I, I've achieved some goals that I set for myself and I just keep... Um, setting more goals and thriving for more um, I'm going to college I got a job and um, everything's just turning out how kind of how I envisioned it I believe is to not allow oneself to be comfortable in prison. When I finally determined and decided I wasn't going to be in prison, I wanted to make myself as uncomfortable in prison as possible. Uh, I put in for a transfer to go to Pelican Bay away from some of the more comforts of visitation and things like that. And this pandemic is providing an opportunity for a bunch of people to have a self check. Do I really want to be in here? Or do I want to get out there and be with family who are going through some of these life-changing situations like pandemics and presidential stuff and social unrest and all that? For me, it's been a joy to be home during this period because I'm with people who care about me and who I'm with. And I would encourage them to really look at that. I say, don't lose hope. Stay in your word. Um, those of you that have family and you know, friends, like, just talk to them, um, seek, you know, if you can get any kind of, like, if you're having, what is it called, um, when you have a lot of downtime, sometimes we get in our head, um, if you're having any of those issues, I just suggest that you try to talk to someone about it, um, your family, just stay in contact, write, you know, write, um, read, um, don't, you know, TV, whatever you can to kind of keep yourself distracted, to keep yourself busy, um, for me, you know, I, when I was in there, I, I stayed in my word and I wrote my family as much as I could possibly. Um, I, I tried to just stay, remain positive as I could. Um, just know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Some people, they don't have family members and some people, they look forward to going home to family members. It's just, you got to set your own uh, motivation. And my motivation, honestly, was, um, I wanted to be a math teacher and uh, a math teacher inside there um, he showed me like my potential and it just encouraged me more and more and like the friends I hung around they they didn't like how I would go to school and I was always like around staff but then again like um, you, you can't let people their voice get in your head and um, 
guide you. You gotta guide yourself. And at the end of the day, you just gotta love your friends from a distance. Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Joseph Osorio and I'm a life coach with the Anti-Recidivism Coalition and I currently work at Pelican Bay State Prison. Like many of you, I spent over 18 years inside the California Department of Corrections. These were different times when I was in there. I never had to deal with the pandemic. I never had to deal with the stress that you are having to deal with today. Uh, I want you to know that although we are not there physically uh, to run our classes and support you the way we would love to be, uh, we are all out here and fighting for you and we constantly keep you guys in mind. Until we can get back into the classes, I just want to encourage you guys to take care of yourself. Stay healthy, both physically and mentally. Do what you can and stay busy. There's certain things we have no control over, but what you do have control over is the time that you use in there. Use it wisely. Take up drawing, exercise, meditate, prayer. Whatever it is that you can find to keep that balance, I would encourage you, encourage you to do it. We send our love. I'm all the way out here in Las Vegas spending time with my family, but I miss you guys, and I can't wait to get back in there. Peace, everybody. Stay safe and healthy. Welcome home, bro. <laughs> Welcome home. We gonna pop the trunk for you, homie. How's it feel? I can't wait. Bear release is a wonderful feeling. feeling. To play this game Not as amazing as the healing Game of life Game of heroes, slay my villain I can't be Chose integrity, yo, it's still it Made a positive change Lies incarcerated my soul In my brain Truth made my heart grow The way I I lead now, calm and bold. Calm and bold. It's not the same. No longer follow, alone and cold. Alone and cold. I can't wait. It took years for me to learn trust. Learn trust. To play this game. No one to call, but never gave up. Gave up. Game of life. I gave love, free man. gave up life. Officially a free man. I can't wait. Create wealth, forget chasing bucks. I can't wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait to play this game. How's it feel to be out? There's no words. There's no words. I, I've, been, I've been processing this the last couple of days and um, I equate it to. Uh, Giving off a rocket ship to Mars. Because I've left so much of me back over there. So this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. We gonna go ahead and get you away from this prison, bro.